I'm Flav Giorgini. I'm a lecturer here in the Department of Genetics at the University of Leicester, and my group is interested in neurodegenerative disease, primarily Huntington's disease. Our approach is using simple model systems like baker's yeast, which you use to bake bread and brew beer, and fruit flies, Drosophila melanogaster, to study some of the conserved basic mechanisms involved in neurodegenerative disease. So one of the hallmarks of the disease is cell death. In the case of Huntington's disease, since it's a neurodegenerative disease, you see loss or death of neurons. And so what we can do is we can actually express a portion of the mutant Huntington protein in Baker's yeast, and what you see is cell death. So it mimics what's going on in the neurons. The benefit of using yeast is the fact that it's a very simple organism, has very powerful genetics, and we can do experiments very, very rapidly. We can basically interrogate every single yeast gene by either deleting it or overexpressing it. Now, of course, one of the limitations of the yeast is the fact it doesn't have a nervous system, and obviously there are certain symptoms of the disease that we can't mimic. For example, behavior, locomotor activity, these sorts of things, you can't really look at in yeast. So that's where we move into Drosophila, which is also a very, very powerful and well-defined genetic tool. But obviously the big benefit for us is that flies have a nervous system. So we can now start looking at phenotypes or symptoms in the Drosophila that more closely mimic what's going on in patients. The combination of doing work in yeast and Drosophila allows us to quickly look at many, many candidates, but then actually validate them very robustly. In terms of our work, we'd like to see some of our candidates, specifically some of the compounds that we've identified recently that appear to be protective in our models, we'd like to actually see these tested in higher systems with the hope that then these could be moved on ultimately into clinical trials. And basically that our work now has hopefully served as a filter that we've been able to reduce a lot of red herring, shall we say, and that we're able to identify some really strong candidates that are worthy of exploration in higher systems and to really reduce hopefully in the future, the number of animal experiments that need to be done. Age of onset of Huntington's disease may be 45 years of age, but there's subtle changes occurring before that that we're now starting to look at. And I think it would be a big breakthrough if people could identify protective compounds, such as the ones that we've identified, and see whether or not you can modulate some of these biomarkers in advance of actual disease onset. And I think that's really what we're talking about here. Maybe not so much curing, in, as in the classical sense of the word, curing a disease, but really trying to delay the onset of symptoms. Because if you can push back the average age of onset from 45 years of age to 75 years of age, then to some degree, you've won the biggest battle. Yeah, that'd be perfect. We'll probably have to measure a couple of hundred, though.